from the sister side. Yes, sister, most welcome. Okay, assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to all. I'm Nadia Naji and I work as a town planner. This is a question for my dearest friend who is a non Muslim. His name is Mahesh Kumar and he's a Hindu. And he's one of your biggest fans and most ardent supporters that I have known. And he has this one simple question. Um, I'm, st uh, I'm sure that you are aware there has been a fierce debate and ongoing discussions about how similar Hindu and Islam is. And there are several claims to the standard saying how Kaaba are actually derived from the Kabbalishwara temple, which means that the part where Shiva uh, put his crescent moon on his head. And there are certain uh, similarities between how... Sister, can you pose the question a bit slowly? Oh, okay. Can, slowly and clearly, please, sister. All right. Sorry, the first part I heard about our friend Mahesh, but when you start speaking <laughs> on the temple, I did not understand. Okay. Um, Mahesh is a Hindu, and he's a dearest person to me because we're very close, and he's one of your ardent supporters, and he even looked like you a bit. Um, and he has these questions about the ongoing debate, which is fiercely done by the internet. There are several writings saying how similar Hindu and Islam is. And uh, those claims, I mean, partly of the claims are saying that how um, the Kaaba are derived from the word Kabbalishwara, meaning the temple, which is especially, uh, specifically for Shiva, at the moment when he put uh, the crescent moon on his forehead. And there are even some claims they are saying how similar our pilgrims of Hajj and Umrah look to Holy Pandit of Hindu. And there are also um, some claims saying that King Vikramaditya inscription on golden disc were hung in the Kaaba, and many, many more claims saying that some of them are, uh, such as the word 786, which is all over Quran, are actually a mirror of Om in, Hindu, in Sanskrit. <coughs> the sister asked a very good question that one of our friends by the name of Mahesh, he's a fan of mine, and he asked that there are many similarities between Islam and Hinduism going on on the internet. And she gave a few examples regarding Kaaba being a Kamleshwar temple. Yes. And talking it belongs to Shiva, or the way the Hajj is done, the rites of the Hindus, and uh, even the King Vikramaditya, something hanging in Kaaba. Uh, Dr. Zaki, and one more is saying that the circumvolutions of Kaaba, the seven times, are similar to those um, um, practiced in temples. First, we should realize, sister. If you have to understand any religion, don't look at the followers, look at the scriptures. If I have to understand Islam, don't look at the Muslims, understand the Quran and the authentic Hadith which are the scriptures of Islam. Similarly, if I have to understand Hinduism, I don't have to look at the Hindus, I have to understand the scriptures. The Hindu scriptures have been divided into two types, the Shruti and the Smriti. The Shruti is the word of God. In Shruti, you have the Vedas and the Upanishads. In the Smriti, you have the Puranas, you have the Etihas, you have the Ramayana, you have the Mahabharata, you have the Bhagavad Gita. The most superior books are the Shruti, Vedas and the Puranas. I know there are many books written by similarity between Islam and Hinduism, including by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Yes. And many things what you said, some of them are there in this book. Mm -hmm. That Kaaba is shivling yes. and Kaaba is this. Mm -hmm. Not yes, it is no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where now you see in none of the Hindu scripture ever does it say that Kaaba is Shivli. I want proof. It is his thinking. When you talk similarities, quote chapter number, verse number. And that's what I do. When I give a lecture, I quote Veda chapter number so and so, verse number so and so. If I talk about concept of God, I'll give you references. Not what Mahesh is following or what Ganesh is following, or what anyone is following. We have to quote the scriptures. So when we compare about similarities, many a times they are comparing things which are not there in Islam. If some Muslim is doing some wrong practice, and someone copies and says even Hindus do that, that does not mean Islam is saying that. And there are some Muslims who do wrong practice, they think it is Islamic, it's not Islamic. So for comparing two religions, we have to compare the scripture sister. There are many similarities. I don't know of any place in the Quran mentioned that Kaaba is of Shiva. Nowhere in any of the Hindu scriptures 
any of the Shruti, whether Veda or Purana, that it is Shivling. Some say it is Shivling, some like Kamleshwar temple. These are all hypotheses. And when I had a debate with Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, he said, you know, I wrote this book very fast, in two hours. Who told you to write the book in two hours? See, I give reply in two minutes, less than two minutes, correct? Just because I give the reply immediately in two minutes, that does not justify that I can make a mistake. Such a great personality, such a big following, you write a book and many of the things are wrong, it's not part of Islam at all. Similarly, sister, there is no proof of what you have said. Yes, regarding Hajj mm -hmm. and the Tirth. Yes, the Kaaba is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. If you read Rigved, book number 10, it says the place for worship is the place where Narashansa was born. Mm -hmm. Narashansa is, Nar means man, Shansa means praiseworthy, praiseworthy. In Arabic, it is Muhammad sallallahu so it says the place of Tirth, the place of pilgrimage is the place where Narashansa was born, where Prophet Muhammad was born. Yes, it does say. But doesn't say Shivling is Kaaba. It doesn't say that. There are places, I have given a full talk, for example, if I want to compare the concept of God in Islam and Hinduism, I say that most of the Hindus if you ask a common Hindu, how many gods does he believe in? Some will say three, some will say ten, some will say thousand, some will say thirty-three crores, three hundred and thirty million. But if you ask a learned Hindu, who is well versed with the scriptures, that how many gods should the Hindus believe in? He will say one god. But the common Hindu, he believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. The common Hindu believes that everything is God. The tree is God. The sun is God, the moon is God, the human being is God, the snake is God. What we Muslims believe is, everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe S. Everything belongs to God. The tree belongs to God, the sun belongs to God, the moon belongs to God, the human being belongs to God, the snake belongs to God. So the major difference between the Hindu and the Muslim is, the common Hindu says, everything is God. We Muslims say, everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe S. The major difference is the apostrophe S. If we can solve this difference of apostrophe S, the Hindus and the Muslims will be united. How will you do it? Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawa'im bainana bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Now when we read the Hindu scriptures, when we read the Chandogya Upanishad, Chapter number six, section number two, verse number one. It says, Ekkam evidityam. It's a Sanskrit quotation which says, God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Sita Sita Upanishad. Chapter number six, verse number nine. Na kasya kasij, janita na chadipa. It's a Sanskrit quotation which says, Almighty God has got no Lord, has got no mother, no father. It's mentioned in Sita Sita Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. Na tasya asti. Of that God, there is no pratima. Pratima in Sanskrit means an image. Mm. Pratima means a picture, a portrait, a photograph, a sculpture, a idol. Na tasya asti. Of that God, there is no pratima. There is no image. There is no picture. There is no painting. There is no portrait. There is no idol. There is no sculpture. Who says that? Sita Sita Rapanisha, chapter number 4, number 19. Further, if you read, amongst the Hindu scriptures, the most sacred, the, the most widely read is the Bhagavad Gita. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 21. All those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods, they worship false gods. And the most sacred amongst all the Hindu scriptures are the Vedas. If you read the Veda, it's mentioned in Yajur Ved. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3. Na tasti asti. Of that God, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no picture, there is no idol, there is no sculpture. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 8, that Almighty God is pure and doesn't have any image, imageless. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 9. Andhatma Pavishanti Ya Asambuti Mupaste. They are entering darkness, those who worship the Sambuti. That is the natural thing, like water, air, 
fire and the verse continues they are entering more in darkness those who worship the asambuti the created thing like table chair idol etc who says that yajurved chapter number 40 verse number 9 and the brahma sutra of hinduism means ekam braham dyutya naste nena naste kinchan bhagwan ek hai dusra nahi hai nahi hai nahi hai zara bhi nahi hai there is only one god not a second one not at all not at all not in the least bit now i am quoting with reference and believe me there are many hindus who love me they respect me they even come, come and touch my feet i say it is shirk <laughs> they say we have no we have seen avatar of god shirk haram because i quote i have not seen any any hindu speaker quoting like that i am a student of compared religion i am not a scholar so they come and they touch my feet i say haram shirk but those who are fanatic they don't like it and they say Zakir is bringing discord now, am I being discord? I am trying to get the Muslims and Hindus together by removing the apostrophe yes. and how do I remove the astro- how do I remove the apostrophe yes? quoting the scriptures have I criticized any one point but I speak on a scholarly level with proof so when you get similarity sister get similarity between the scriptures not hypothesis mm-hmm. well, hypothesis will create problems mm-hmm. if you say something it will hurt the sentiments yes. I am quoting the scripture that's the different thing that most of the Hindus do not know the scriptures so when they come to know many a time the Hindu said we have sat for your lecture and question and session for three years in my 40 years what I did not learn I learned in three hours of your lecture and question answer session Alhamdulillah and many of the Hindus respect me they love me but some who are fanatic, they don't like. Why? Because if Hindus and Muslims get together, then both of them will close down. They will shop, the shop will close down. You know, mm-hmm. you know shop. Some people have made shops to sell. Mm-hmm. So we are here to bring peace between the different religions, whether it be Christianity, that's what the Quran says. Ta'ala ila kalimatin sawa in baina bainakum. You know, ask your friend Mahesh to see my talk on similarities between Hinduism and Islam. It does not speak anything against Hinduism, but speaks about the similarities which many things which the Hindus aren't aware and even Muslims aren't aware. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.